Hello and welcome to Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. And I'll probably get that title wrong a few times because I think I keep saying of Magic and Steamworks Obscura, but still the same thing. It is Arcanum. It is a game that came out in 2001, um, right after um, Black Isle, the uh, people who did the Fallout games broke up and splintered off. Um, uh, Brian Fargo went off to make In Exile um, and did like the Bard's Tale games and now is doing the um, Wasteland games. Um, Fergus Utherkart or Uthart, I it's a Russian name and I can't pronounce it. Um, he went on to make Obsidian. Um, which has done a lot of really great games, including the wonderful Fallout New Vegas, which is, to me, the actual third Fallout game, and the last one. Um, and then Tim Kane created Trokia Games, who, which, if you're familiar with any other game Trokia has made, Arcanum, uh, Vampire Bloodlines, um, and... Uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. Um, their games are very ambitious, very wonderful and atmospheric, and buggy as hell. Yeah, so apparently Tim Kane is where all the bugs and Fallout came from. Um, I am currently playing with a uh, massive overhaul. Um, down here you see the uh, ME uh 1.408. Uh, this is the Multiverse Edition, which is, again, a giant overhaul of um, uh, Arcanum. It um, fixes a lot of the bugs, puts back in a bunch of stuff that was cut out, and um, includes a lot of the free um, expansions that uh, Trochia made um, after release. So, go to single player. Now, the game used to have a multiplayer. That's been taken out for the um, multiverse edition. I think even the GOG edition, which um, this is which uh, I have the base game from. I think that even gets rid of the multiplayer. Um, great concept, poor execution. Um, but we'll do single player. And this is going to be a new game. Um, you can pick pre-designed characters. Um, Erwin Tumblebrook, Godfrey Kesselberger, Horace McGinney, Muck Evil Eye, Drend Lelour, Solomon Dune, Medic blah, 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 blah. But we're going to do a new character. So, before I start, let's talk about the setting of Arcanum, which is by far one of its best um, aspects. Um, Arcanum is a game that takes place during, um, the Industrial Revolution, the Victorian era. Uh, it is very steampunk, which is where you get, you know, part of the title from, um, of Steamworks. Um, not enough role-playing games take place during this time, and it is a real shame. Also, um, usually there isn't this much black, but, um, I've, with the, um, update, I've moved this into, like, widescreen, so I can see a lot more, so some pages like this look a little bit wonky, um, but this, kind of like that Shadowrun game, um, is a world that includes um, fantasy races. You've got humans, dwarves, elves, half-elves, gnomes, halflings, half-orcs, half-ogres. Um, and you can choose the um, gender of your race to be stronger than the field and lower constitution. Uh, kind of is true. Um, men have, like, just naturally all eights whereas if you click to women yeah they gain a point in constitution and lord and strength which eh, i mean it's 
not the most egregious thing I have ever seen. Um, here's another thing. Um, when they made the game, and this hasn't been fixed because it would cost a lot of money for, or, like, a lot of time and resources for the, um, people who made this patch, the only, uh, female species allowed are the medium-sized ones. So, you can do human, elf, half-elf, or half-orc. Um, you can't play any of the, um... Dwarves, halflings, gnomes, because um, they're too small and they don't have a small female sprite. And you can't play a female half-ogre, which um, is kind of disappointing. That said, we are going to play a half-orc female. Um, going to choose a... Um, let's see, which one would I prefer more? I think I might want to go with this one. Um, and then there's the background, which allows you um, a bit of changes in all of your stats and what you start off with. Um, no significant backgrounds, hey, candidates, blah, 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 blah. So many of these. Um, some of them are species oriented, um, some of them, you know, anyone can have uh usually i would have gone with sickly if this was vanilla arcanum uh mother nation can be harsh mistress having bored with an extremely weak immune system you have penalties to strength and constitution drops those down to six which isn't terrible but it's not great and dexterity that i'm a little more upset with the with the build i'm planning for this character but all's not lost after you sense for the fever and a good book is afforded you a naturally high intelligence plus six which brings our intelligence to 14. really useful but i don't think i'm gonna do that one um what i am going to do is Technophobia, Ellen Child, da -da -da -da, Miracle Operation, Charming Soul, Heavy Hand, Undersize. Um, a lot, some of these are added with the um, uh, um, the multiverse version, and including the uh, background I want to go with. Working Class Defender. You grew up in a factory and hated the system that reigns in Tarant and other bourgeoisie industrial megacities. Being brought up outside the normal environment, you cannot boast good health, minus five hit points, and get a reaction penalty of minus five. You are, however, gifted an attentive young half-orc, which makes it possible to understand the structure of enterprise and production cycles. You get a bonus, plus one to intelligence and perception. Nice. After cop propagating for trade unions were kicked out of the factory you grew up in were assisted by uh, grateful workers who have ushered you their last pennies to purchase you a ticket aboard the IFS Zephyr bound for Tarant, the industrial center of the world. And we are going to name ourselves... Alyssa Relfus. Now, um... Yeah, I think that should be good. So we click here, and we're at level one, and we've got five points to toss around to everything. Um, you can put points right into your uh, raw stats, which you'll need to do to increase some of your skills. You can put it right into your um, health, which, you know, is useful. And then there is fatigue. Um, fatigue is both your ability to stay awake and also your magic power. Um, we're not playing a magic user, so no need to worry about that. Um, these are our skills. We have combat skills, bows, dodge, melee, throwing. We've got a half point in both dodge and melee as a half orc. Um, you have your thieving skills, backstab, pickpocket, prowling, and spot trap. All very useful. Social skills, gambling, hail... Haggling, Healing, and Persuasion. We're going to be putting some stuff into that. And finally, Technological Skills. <coughs> Sorry about that. While Thieves can spot traps, it takes a Technological Skill to disarm it. 
Um, that said, we're putting a point in firearms because that's going to be our pre or predominant way of dealing with um, violence is we're going to be using a gun. Um, and if you've noticed, our um, affiliation uh, meter went five towards technological. Um, your affinity towards technology or magic determines um, how well t uh, magic affects you and how well you can use it. Um, if you are like all the way down here at a hundred and someone tries to cast a fireball at you, uh, you essentially ignore it because you're a, you know, technological, you know, beast. Um, that said, if you tried to say use a healing potion while your technological affinity is at a hundred, it does nothing. So keep that in mind. That said, um, yep, this one has all sorts of spells. We aren't going to be using any of those. We are going to do technological disciplines. And we are going to learn how to create a handcrafted front lock. At this point, I am going to spend, from my three remaining points, one more point in beauty, one point in uh, charisma, just to get my uh, <laughs> looks up, I guess. Um, I can't take anything down because, you know, that would be useful. Um, and this is our alignment meter. Uh, if it's going over towards here, we're good. If it's going over towards here, we're being bad. We're going to probably be trying to be good for this run. Um, so, I'm going to do that, plus... I think I'm going to put a point into haggling. So, we go from here, and we are greeted with the human shopkeeper. This is a... Um, sort of an introductory thing that shows how well you kind of start off with. You always start off with uh, 400 gold unless your um, uh, background says differently and you just start off with like a pair of basic clothing. So the first thing I'm going to do is buy this elegant dress which increases my reaction to plus 20. So see how this um, regular sword is 155 coins. I'm going to buy and wear this dress. Suddenly the sword is worth 112. Aha! Uh -huh. So we look good. Um, out of the weapons we are going to have available to us, um, I am going to purchase a uh, fine steel dagger, because uh, that's only 28. The weapon I would have kind of preferred is a quality sword, but that's 140, and eh, I'm not going to be using that much in melee. Although I'm definitely going to put points into melee eventually, because uh, a lot of times you're kind of um, forced to use regular uh, combat. Um, so I have 310 left. Um... Yeah, um, you can gamble with the opening shopkeeper and hope to you get enough money to afford, like, the rifle and things, but yeah. Um, so I am going to purchase um, Oh, let's uh, exit out of that and try to purchase 70 bullets? Yeah, okay, I can afford a bit more. Um, six more bullets, I think. Oh, seven. Okay, I've got 77 bullets on hand, two gold coins to rub against each other. Notice I have not picked up the flintlock pistol. Yep, I should be able to um, work my own mo mojo with that. So, we hit next screen, 
and we go to the opening cutscene. Help me, please. Oh, thank you, my friend. I haven't got much time. <coughs> you must find the boy. Find the boy and give him back his ring. Now he will know what needs to be done. <coughs> now listen, listen to me. We had to do it. He did unspeakable things to us, and we, we had no choice but to do as he said. And there are so few of us left, but the work is almost finished, and then the evil, oh, you can't imagine. He's coming back to destroy everything, everything and everyone. Now, please, just find the boy. <coughs> Tell him that I escaped. I came back to warn. <coughs> he will know what to do. You, my friend, it's all up to you. And that is our somber beginning. Our ship has crashed. We've talked to a uh, dying gnome, uh, throwing a ring in our hands, asking us to find the boy. And a hooded robed figure approaches us. As you can see in the upper right hand corner, it's loading. Yep. Uh, it's actually loading up a whole lot. Uh, hopefully this isn't going to be too usual when we go to new places, but yeah. I can't believe it! I mean, you and, and then the Zeppelin and, and the fire! And the altar says that... Do you have any idea what all of this means? What are you going on about? You speak! I, I mean... Of, of course you speak. What am I, a blathering idiot? Wait, what, what did you say? Maybe I should be writing all of this down. I, I'd like to help you out here, but I'm a bit confused. I am at a loss here. I, I, I don't quite know what to do. Uh, I mean, you are the... the oh, of course you are. I mean, you do know who you are, right? Of course you do. What, what, what sort of brainless, half-baked question is that for the... the uh, the, uh, what, 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 what do you call yourself? Please, sir, slow down and tell me what you're saying. Please, forgive me. 
I'm making a bloody mess of this whole affair. My name is Virgil, madam, and I'm new to the Panari religion. Uh, your religion, and I... Oh, oh, wait, uh... I, uh, hereby dedicate... No, no, uh... Commit my life to the living one. I, Virgil, am at your service, madam. So he's kneeling in front of me right now. Uh, Virgil, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm just not who you think I am. Yes, yes, of course you're not really him, just his reincarnation. I, I mean, that is the case, right? I have to admit, I'm no expert in elven philosophy or, or, or prophecy. Bloody confusing, you know. All those these thous. <laughs> Not, not that it's not interesting, um... <clears throat> Virgil... Yes, right, uh, just give me a moment here. You, you see, the Panari, that's the religion that was formed around the things that he said. I, I mean, that you said. Oh, forget it. Let, let's start at the beginning. Or this beginning, since there is a lot more that came before this. You are the reincarnation of a powerful elf who the Panari worship and whose name is, uh... Y yes Right. Yes, uh, the name. Uh, wait. I remember something. It is written in the scriptures. The living one will live again on wings of fire. No, 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 wait. I think it says, reborn on wings of fire. Oh, blood and ashes. Why do elves always have to be so damn cryptic? Do the scriptures speak of a dying gnome and a ring? Hmm. I don't know about the ring, but this business about the evil one returning. Uh, as I've said, I don't know a whole lot about the Panari prophecies, but I think you were supposed to return and fight someone evil. Ah, uh, bloody hell, I should know more of this. If this is confusing to you, imagine how I must feel. I would like to clear up your confusion, but I am new to the Panari religion myself. I must bring you to meet my mentor, Elder Joaquin. He can answer your questions. He is in Shrouded Hills, a town at the base of these mountains. Who is this Joaquim fellow? Joaquim, well, gave me a hand when I needed it. Showed me the truth of the Panari and its beliefs. He's a very wise man, and will know what needs to be done. Well, let's go talk to this Joaquim fellow and straighten this out. The path out of here leading down to Shrouded Hills is down to the southeast. We'll stop by the Panari Shrine on the way out. See if it makes any of this any more clear. We should look for any other survivors before we leave, though. What do you think? Agreed. But that's going to be for next time. So when we come back, Arcanum. It come, opens up with a bang. Have a good one, folks.